Hello and welcome to this special edition of Prepare to Survive. I'm Kevin Baxter with Pinellas County Communications and joining me today is Kelly Levy, the Natural Resources Division Manager with Pinellas County. Kelly, thanks for coming in. Well, thank you for having me. And we're talking about flooding. We had uh, a lot of flooding in Pinellas County over the last um, month or so, July and August, uh, dealing with flooding. And Kelly, we'll start off with why are we susceptible to flooding in Pinellas County? Well, when you, you look at our natural landscape, um, we're low-lying, we're surrounded by water. We have the Anclote River to the north, the Gulf of Mexico and Intracoastal to the, to the west, and Tampa Bay to the east and south. We're surrounded by water. We have water um, that flows through Pinellas County. We have creeks, we have streams, we have lakes, wetlands, and um, together with a, being a really low-lying area, it does make us susceptible to flooding. So those are some of the factors that contribute to Pinellas County's characteristics. And how did this rain event kind of differ from some, some that we've seen in the past? Well, I think it's, it's a more complicated issue in that we've had a couple years where we've gone through a very wet, rainy season. Then typically in the winter you dry out and that allows our natural storage areas to, to go down and create storage so that when we go into the next rainy season, we're, the system can handle it. Unfortunately, we went from wet to wet winter, back to wet summer, and, and again. So our storage, our natural storage areas never got the recovery. Um, the difference here, so we, we had no recovery, and then we just had accumulation of a significant amount of rainfall over multiple weeks, and we, it just didn't let up. Um, so when you put those two pieces together, you know, we're already very wet, we're saturated, our natural storage areas are full, extreme amounts of rainfall, there just is nowhere for the water to go. And so in particular, we saw certain neighborhoods deal with um, very significant flooding, mm -hmm. including uh, in Tarpon Woods in North County, which is near Brooker Creek, mm -hmm. and uh, what makes this area different, maybe even more uh, susceptible again to, to a type of, this type of flooding? Well, this, that particular community is within what's called the floodplain of Brooker Creek. So when the creek um, comes out of its banks, it gets too high, it starts sheet flowing outward, um, water finds its own level and it goes to those low areas and Tarpon Woods is right there. If you uh, visit the county's floodplain management website, there's a tool there where you can actually look at your address and, and see where your property lies in vicinity to FEMA floodplains. And this area um, is, is right in the floodplain of Brooker Creek, which created um, a challenge um, you know, in dealing with all the extra rainfall. And we saw a level of flooding there that uh, the streets were flooded for a time and, and folks were stranded in their homes for a time. You were talking about even a couple of weeks after the, the most significant flooding, Brooker Creek still at a significantly higher level than, than you'd like to see uh, in that area. How does, that, uh, how does the level get affected by the rain and, and that saturation in the water? Um, well, during this time of year, Brooker Creek's um, average stage level or elevation is around 9, and we're still staged up to over 11. And the reason that concerns me is because now we, we still have no storage. Um, the, that's telling us that the creek is full, it's at capacity. Um, so when it rains, we're going to see dramatic increases in the creek stage. It's going to rise again uh, because there is nowhere else for the water to go. Um, it's, it is a complicated watershed. About 60% uh, of it is in Hillsborough County. Um, so, as, so it's very large. So when there's significant amounts of rainfall over this very large, I think 39 square mile area, and it all runs downhill, you know, the Pinellas side of Brooker Creek is at the bottom of that hill. And um, it's gonna be a while before um, we get out of the rainy season. And if we don't get some period of dry so that that creek can recover, we're going to see more extreme gauge heights as we get more rainfall. And we saw it really needs to just be a little bit over 12 feet to, to cause the flooding in that neighborhood. About 12.2 is when we start to see um, flooding on Tonywood. Um, in that community. So yes, it's, uh, 
in, in the past, we would see that flooding just over 11. Mm. So some of, the, some of the improvements that were made have, have created some additional um, flood protection for that community. So talk about that. What, what kind of improvements has the Pinellas County made to, to the area to try and address this? Well, in, um, in 2006, uh, there was a, a, a pipe that was installed um, under Tony Wood Lane. Um, and then some back uh, flow prevention devices were installed in 2009. Um, there was some upsizing of some of the drainage pipes on the central portion of Tony Wood Lane back in 2010. Um, check valves or backflow prevention devices were put in place on Bryan Road in 2012. And then what was called the um, Tarpon Woods Secondary Drainage Outfall System was uh, constructed in 2013. And that whole system together um, compiled a 6,500 um, foot bypass system that allowed the water to flow um, out of the out of the stormwater system and, and further downstream away from the Tarpon Woods community. It actually created about an extra foot of storm protection for that community. So it was a, you know, in our opinion, it was very successful. Uh, it's just that when you get these extreme events, it's always going to be more than the system can handle. So we know that flooding is, is a possibility for a lot of residents here. Uh, what can residents do to uh, help themselves prepare for, for this kind of possibility? Well, one, I would say do your homework. <laughs> you know, make sure you understand where you live. Um, your public works department is a good um, option to call and, and find out. You can ask, I mean, what type of flooding issues have been recorded in my community? And that, that information is available to you. Um, back to the Pinellas County, the floodplain um, management website has the flood map center where you can um, research your address. Um, find more out about your community and where you live. And then look at some of the resources that are available online um, through the county and through FEMA for flood proofing your home. Things that you can do to reduce your risk is what you're trying to do. Of course, make sure your insurance stays up to date. But if we know that a situation is going to happen and you're used to saying this road is going to flood, I know I may be trapped in my home for a few days, then make sure that you have your prescriptions up to date. Make sure that you have enough food and water in case there is a boil water notice. Um, make sure that your pets are, are prepared, that you have food and, and your pets medications as well. Um, so you're just gonna look for those, those things that you can do to prepare yourself to um, go through the storm or to leave and find a, a more comfortable place to you know, wait it out. Yeah, if you know it's coming and uh, you know your house might be isolated but you might not be, but the house might not be damaged, you could just uh, find a place to evacuate to as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's more about, you know, what you're comfortable doing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think there's a lot of people who are not comfortable leaving their home, um, but yet want to be, want to have um, access to the amenities in the surrounding area. So if, if that is important to you, you know, having a, a temporary, um, a temporary housing, uh, alternative might be your best your best option. And another thing residents can do to prepare is uh, signing up for our community notification service, which, which really did come in handy this last flooding event. Yes, I would highly recommend that all residents of Pinellas County sign up for this service. It's a way for you to get um, critical information about your community and emergencies. Well, Kelly, thank you again for joining us today. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you for joining us on this edition of Prepare to Survive. We have plenty of information about flooding on our website, so please do visit that uh, also by phone uh, for any questions you may have about flooding in Pinellas County. You can email us with any questions as well at ema at pinellascounty.org. See other editions of this show and other preparedness videos on our YouTube channel. And visit our emergency management webpage for additional information about preparing yourself for an emergency. Thanks again for joining us and join us next time on Prepare to Survive.